Thank him enough. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What a mighty, mighty, mighty God we serve. So real and so worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Always making a way out of no way for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you. As we give you all the glory and all the honor this day, God, we ask that you have your way, Holy Spirit, that you take complete control of this service, Lord God. You know exactly what we need, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, because you're a supplier of all of our needs. And we give you all the glory and all the honor, Lord Jesus. We thank you for our bishop, and we thank you for the first lady and all the ones that make this ministry what it is, our musicians, our praise leader. Lord, we need you now, Lord. We need you now, Holy Spirit, to open the eyes of our understanding, to put your word deep down into our hearts, oh God. And Father God, we give you all the glory and all the honor in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You can be seated if you can. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We pray. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God has been so good to us. And he's prepared a way for us. And when we teaching and learning about the things of God and about the Holy Ghost and how important he is, he does so much. Today when I was studying about the protection, how he protects us, the Holy Spirit. We want to be filled with the Holy Spirit for so many reasons, but he does way more than what we could even think of. He covers us. He protects us. He steers the car the other way. He, you think that little lock on your door can stop anybody from doing anything? But God, what a mighty God we serve. He goes beyond. He looks beyond our faults and he sees our needs. And we just appreciate him tonight. We appreciate him. Because by the power of the Holy Ghost, he continuously working miracles in our life. And it makes me sad when folks don't receive the Holy Spirit and they don't understand how important he is. They just trying to do the best that they can and they see the best that they can can never add up to what God's expectations of us. It can never add up because without his Holy Spirit, we can't please him. We can't do the right thing when we every single time. We may hit sometimes, but most of the time we miss. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But we have to have the power of the Holy Ghost. And with that, we receive everything we need. The Bible says over in Galatians 2, 2 verse 20. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. The Bible says in Galatians 2 and 20, if you have it, please say amen. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. First of all, when we realize the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ really loved us and gave himself for us, but he just didn't stop there, even though he shed his innocent blood, took all the stripes on his back. They beat him up, plucked his beard, slapped his face, pierced him in the side. They did all kind of things to him because he loved us. But he didn't just stop there. He made a home run, and we know what he did because it was important that he wanted the Holy Spirit, his spirit, to live in us. Because we couldn't do it in the Old Testament. You already know when you read it, they was doing good for a while, but they couldn't live by the law. They just couldn't get it done. So he had the plan for our life. And that's why we got to get serious about the things of God. We have to be serious. Why we have to be serious? Because the time we live in now is a real spiritual war. I'm sorry, but they're trying to pull down everybody. Now they got T.D. Jakes on the hot seat and, there, and, and others and Joyce Meyer was on there and all other ones was on there just coming up with all kind of stuff. 
whether it's true or not, that's not our judgment call. That's right. Our call is to continue to pray for them and continue to believe God. That's our part, not to take sides, not to be over here. That's still the household of faith until God say different. And if he want to say different, he know how to make it clear. We don't have no problems with that, but don't get caught up talking about people and don't know what you're talking about. Yes. Next thing you know, all your blessings done turned into a disaster because you put your mouth on God's people. It's not a good idea. But we got a spiritual war going on. It's grown so big right now. Teachers, Bible students, people at the church is teaching wrong, just teaching what they want to teach, not teaching the things that God told them to because they don't have God's Holy Spirit to give them the guidance and the leadership and opening up their understanding like they should. So they teach in prosperity, teaching about money. God never told us to teach about money. Neither did he care about money. When you think about money, when they had to pay them taxes, he told them, go on down there to the water, open up that fish mouth, take that money, and pay Caesar what he needs. He didn't worry about it by his fingernails off. Oh, we got it. No, that's just the enemy's plan for us to keep us out of the will of God. So 2024, we changing. We not teaching that. We not teaching that you got to be poor and raggedy. That, that's not true. Because our God is God and he loves us. All silver and gold really does belong to him. We don't have to beg him for nothing. He's a supplier of our need. He already know what we have need of before we even ask. God already know. So we know that it's a big fight right now. But we got to trust in God. We got to trust him today. What does it mean to trust him? You have to obey the things that he's already said. You have to be in right position with him. You can't be up one day and down the other. God don't operate like that. You can't be praising him one minute and putting your mouth on people at the same time. God wants us to get away from that. How are we going to get away from all of that? Because we're going to receive his spirit. And we're going to be born again. We're not going to be that same old way. We're not worrying about what our generational curses or whatever it is. We're not worrying about that. Because we're going to be born again. And able to do what God say we can do. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we know that. We know that he loved us so much. And then he told us in Acts 1 and 8, what did he say? See, all these things we know, but do we really know? Acts 1 and 8. He said we was going to do what? He taught his disciples. He said we was going to receive some power, right? After the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and we shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea, and in Samaria, and in the utmost part of the world. So we know that God said we're going to receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon us. But if the Holy Ghost not coming upon us, then we have no power. And without no power, you can't get the job done. Because without the part of the Holy Ghost, you're not going to be obedient to nobody. You're not going to do the right thing no time. Because all you're agreeing with is you, yourself, and you. That flesh dictating what you're going to do. And it's getting fed by the enemy speaking into your ear gates. And we have no defense against it because he has power too. Power to guide you and lead you the wrong way. He's an influencer. The devil is. So he influenced you to do the right thing on a lying type of way because he make it seem like it's going to work out for your good, but it doesn't because he's a liar and he's a defeated foe, but he still have influencing power. God didn't take that away, so don't get it twisted. He's a defeated foe because he can't do nothing to you that you don't want done to you. He can't just go against your will and make you drink liquor or smoke dope. He can't do that. He don't have no power to do that, but you could do it. God don't go against our will. So we're talking about protection today. We need the protection that the Holy Ghost brings. Holy Ghost protection. And we need to believe God that he's going to do exactly what he said he would do for us. So many promises in the word of God. While we live so low below our means. Colossians. Colossians. 
Thank you, Lord. Colossians. Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. Listen to what it says. Colossians 3 and 3, it says, For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. So what does that mean? It means that all of our old stuff is already gone. It's dead. We don't have no more sin nature. When you come and receive the things that God has for you, what he has in store for you and your family, we dead to all that worldly junk. We don't, we don't care. It don't raise an eyebrow. Because we are in the Lord Jesus. We are hid in him. Because yeah. we're protected. Yeah. But without the Holy Ghost, you're not hid in no one. Mm -hmm. Without his Holy Spirit, you can't claim this scripture. Mm -hmm. You need his Holy Spirit. Because without his spirit, you none of his. And if you're none of his, there's no protection plan for you. God have mercy on who he want to have mercy on. Amen. But he's teaching us in Axel Gospel Church that we have to stand up and be counted. We have to stand up for righteousness. We got to get filled and refilled with the Holy Ghost. That's not a play thing. Amen. That's for us to receive everything God has in store for us. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. And he has his Holy Spirit here for us. Now we got to, in order to have everything we need to, to, to get it all straight, we used to talk about it all the time. We don't talk about it as much as we used to, and that's the armor of God. We had to put on the whole armor. With the whole armor. You got to get that armor on. The whole armor. The thing about the whole armor, you don't even get to touch it. Without his Holy Spirit. And see, when you, when you start thinking and really paying attention, then you can kind of see and identify who's, not that you want to, you're not judging them, but you know the fruit by the tree, by the way they live. You know the fruit by the things that they say. You already know whether they're filled with the Holy Spirit or not. It's basically because you know, you know when a person is not filled with the Holy Spirit. Because they don't have the armor of God on. They're just talking and saying stuff, and the fruit of the Spirit is not there. The fruit of the Spirit is very present when you're filled with the Holy Ghost. It's something different about you when you baptized in him, when you live in this overcoming life. Yeah, take a minute and think about it. Where are you at with the Lord Jesus? Are you really filled? Are you things running through your mind, things that are corrupt and are not true and all kind of up and down crazy stuff? You having dreams at night, all kind of weird stuff happening. You're looking at stuff that's weird, and now you're feeling all that weird stuff because you know you're not supposed to be connected to that. Come on, come on, come on. The Holy Spirit is not there to convict you when you do the wrong thing. When you do the wrong thing and you feel with the Holy Spirit, he convict you. If you don't take it, it. He ain't playing with us. We have to have that whole armor on. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. The Ephesians, we're going to look at the armor. Come on. We have to have our armor on. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Not just a long skirt and a vile buttoned up. No, 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 no. We're talking about your armor. Yes, your armor. You need your armor on. We have to have it. Ephesians is in the sixth chapter. <laughs> Let's pick it up at 10, verse 10. Thank you, Lord. See, this is the protection. And the reason we're going with that is because we got to get re We're getting ready for war. If you don't know, we got to fight a battle. And it's a spiritual battle. It's not how bad you are with your fists and kicking people and biting them and all that. It's a spiritual battle. And you have to be spiritually sound in order to take this battle on. And God is looking for us to take the battle on. We got to fight the battle. And we have to stand in faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And he's equipping us now 
with everything that we need and it's nothing hard. You don't have to have a credit card. You don't have to have a new car. You don't have to have nothing except for the fact that you made a decision to serve him. Amen. You made a decision that you want to live your life for him. Yes. And you're not changing your mind. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And you ready for the battle. Your whole armor. The Bible says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. How you going to stand against the devil without the power of God? Ask one that you shall receive power. He already promised you that you're going to receive the power. But you have to want to receive the power. You can't just come sit in church and clap and sing and shout and walk out like, oh, well, I did good. No, you didn't. You have to have that desire down on the inside. Lord Jesus, I want to please you. I don't want to please man. I want to please you. I want to be safe in your arms. I want you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Got to have that armor on. The devil's always trying to do one more thing. But we don't have to worry about him. All we have to do is be obedient to what God told us. And we put on our armor. We ready for the battle. The Bible says, because we don't wrestle we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers. Can you see the principalities? Can you see the powers? Against the rulers of the darkness. We coming out of darkness. We coming out of darkness. We're not living like that. Of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. If we were able to identify all of that, we wouldn't need no armor. But because we can't identify we can't see clearly spiritually like that without God's Holy Spirit opening up an understanding, leading and guiding us into all truth because he's the spirit of truth. Then you can understand and see what's really going on, but you can't. You will make a mistake every time without the Holy Spirit. Therefore, wherefore, says 13, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. The Bible says stand. You have to be able to stand. Stand in the evil day. What is the evil day? The day we live in right now. It's the evil day. They call them things that are right, wrong, and wrong is right, and Men and women go to the same bathroom and they got them like that with the kids. And it's all good to them. But then there's us. Without the Holy Spirit, we them too. So in order for us to get away from being categorized as them, we need some power in our life. And authority. And the ability to speak up. We don't have to cower down to the enemy because we're protected. God will send a billion angels to tear him up if that's what we needed. He said he's never leave us nor will he forsake us. Just like the Lord Jesus on that cross. He could have called all the legions of angels to wipe them out. But he didn't do it. He took it because he was doing it for us. Not to sit on our, sit back and look at what's going on. Don't have no power, no authority. Not thinking about what he's already done. He took all that on him so we could have the power and authority that we need to live an overcoming life today. So we can stand up for righteousness. Our kids don't have to suffer because we can speak life into them. The devil is a lie. I don't care how old they are. The Bible says the truth make you free. Not going along with no crazy stuff. The truth make you free. And it's time right now that we got to stand up for the truth. They not going to do us the way that they're doing us every day. It's something else that they're changing to cause it to be a disaster. And we know, but we sitting back quietly like we don't have a voice. Yes, we do. Because you need to know you're protected. So scared of what? Whom shall you fear when you follow that which is good? Yeah. When you're following the Lord Jesus Christ and he's showing you and he's ordering your footsteps, who are you going to be scared of? When greater 
Is he that's in you? You say it all the time. That's one of your favorite scriptures. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in me. And then when it comes to show your greatness, you... Well, what happened to your greatness? The Lord Jesus Christ ain't playing no games. He comes to live within you. He comes on the inside. He want to be in us. He is. That's why we can confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe it in our heart. He is here. That's how we live. Come on, y'all. We putting our armor on, and we fight the good fight of faith. Don't make no mistake. We're not going to leave out of here halfway, half done. We're not going to leave out of here shaking and baking like we got something going on so good, but we really don't. We really do. God is lifting us up, raising us up. We're not of this world. We dead to sin. Ain't no sin laying around in us. We gave up that life. We're born again. Born again. Born again. We received that washing of the blood. We received them. Everything. So we can live an undefeated life. We live a life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Lord. And we got to stand right now today. We got to stand today, you school teachers. Today, you people that work with children. Today, you got to stand up for what's right. You have to speak into your parents' spirit. When they over here raising their kids some kind of way, you can't be afraid of the way they look. You can't be afraid of what they say. In love, you have to tell the truth. That truth make them free every time. Because the Holy Ghost now has something to deal with. The truth. And in the middle of the night, they'll be thinking about what you said. And they can't get mad because God wouldn't let them. He's still protecting you. So we serve a mighty God. With his Holy Spirit in us, we could do all things. All things. Christ who strengthens us. Everything. We could do it. And he's expecting now. 2024 is our year. This battle is so serious. We have a real devil, a real devil that's still here lurking around with his demonic force. A real one. We got to fight against him because he's trying to make sure that he still kill and destroy as many as he can with his influencing ways. Told him, boy, shoot him, shoot him. Shot that police officer. It ain't hard to influence them because they already own drugs. He already got their mind twirling. So when he say shoot him, they, oh. Then now they sitting up there looking, don't even know what happened. I wasn't myself. But yeah, now you're not going to be yourself. Well, they promising you getting life. Before they even take it through court, they saying it. So my point is, we are the ones that are the influencers. It's our job to open up our mouth, to share with those young men, to share with people the good news of the gospel. When we refuse to do our part, to go witnessing because we're too lazy to get up, don't want to talk to nobody, don't care about nobody except for what you got to do. But when you could get up and you start to tell others about the Lord because you're not worried about what they think, you worried about how they're going to make it into heaven. That's our job. Not to be over here looking like we don't have anything to say. You are a disciple of the Lord Jesus. We preach the word at Acts. You can't say you don't get the word. You don't know. You do know. You do know at Acts Full Gospel Church, the word of God is being preached. You have received him as your Lord and Savior. Now we got to stand up. We have to stand up to fight the good fight of faith. Your faith has to be in place. You can't be shaking and baking your faith. Faith. You're not going to see it right away, but your actions has to change. You have to walk, talk, faith. In order for us to please God, 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. We doing good. Because we ain't playing with no devil. We got to be baptized in God's Holy Spirit. That spiritual fruit has to be in us. So when we open up our mouth, we begin to speak things pertaining to the kingdom of God. The Lord Jesus called, taught the disciples all that time. Things pertaining to the kingdom of God. He taught them by examples. He taught them and he showed them the power of God. It, oh, man, he did. He showed them. He raised the dead. He opened blind eyes. He did it all. Thank you, Lord Jesus, so that they could understand what power and authority they have when they trust him because he's a trustworthy God. And as you step out of yourself, you got to step away from yourself. You got to step away from pleasing people, so much wanting people to be on your side that you forget about the Lord Jesus Christ and all that he's done. Every wicked moment you should be thinking about how he gave his life so you could live. Every day that should be the first thing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for shedding your innocent blood so I can make it, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for changing my ways, God. I want more of you, Holy Spirit. I want more of you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When I've done everything I could do with of myself, I'm standing on your word. I'm not changing my mind. I'm standing on your word, what you've already said. I believe you, Lord Jesus, and I'm trusting in your word. Thank you, Lord. And then you begin to praise him. You begin to thank him. And guess what? Thank you, Jesus. He began to build you up. He began to encourage your heart. He put that smile on your face because the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord. Your strength ain't coming from nowhere. I don't care how you work out at the gym or how many pounds you can lift. That strength is not going to give you joy. It may give you a cool-looking temple, and if you don't watch out, the temple is not going to the right place. It'll be looking cool in hell. But when the joy of the Lord is your strength, Thank you, Lord Jesus. You walking complete in, in him because the discipline is there. You're not going to overdo anything to mess up your temple. Your temple housed the Holy Spirit. It's on the inside of you. So when we wake up to righteousness, we see what we can and cannot do. But the good news is we don't want to do it no way. We only want to please God. And without his spirit, you're none of his. He said it loud and clear, without my spirit, because he know it's impossible. It was already impossible in the Old Testament. They did pretty good, but they didn't do that good. David couldn't even build a building for the Lord. He didn't messed up. He, he, his son had to do it. He couldn't even do it. So God ain't playing with us. He don't have no respect to person. I'm going to let you do it, but I'm not going to let you. No, it's according to the way you live. You can't trick God and hide from him and act like you didn't do nothing. He already know what you did. He saw you. No matter if nobody did, he did. So that's why when we repent, see, repenting is, they, they make it light. If you did something wrong, just repent. Just repent. Like, oh, well, just repent. But when you do something wrong, you're going to just repent. No meaning from no remorse, no sorry, no tears, no nothing. You just going to repent. After all that the Lord Jesus Christ did for you, you're not going to just repent. You're going to cry out to God. I'm sorry about this, Lord Jesus. I don't want to never do this again. Please help me. When we learn how to repent, when we learn how to walk away from the junk we're doing, that's wrong. When we learn how to truly repent to God, he is faithful and just to forgive you, but he ain't going to forgive your foolishness. So you better check him out, and you better get to know the Holy Spirit for yourself. Because if you start repeating that stuff they done taught you in whatever church you was in, guess what? It don't work like that. All them repenters that say they repenting and know their heart is far from repenting, they still carrying a sin while they begging your eyeballs off for one more dollar. 
But that ain't what God told us to preach. He said, preach the gospel. He said, preach the gospel. The gospel is the good news. He's a supplier, we already said, of our every need. So when we start living according to the way God said for us to live, you can see change happening in your life and the life of your loved ones and everybody that you come in contact with. It won't be the same. We got to trust God. We need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We need that. We need everything that God has. We need the breastplate of righteousness. We need those shoes, the gospel of peace. We need that shield of faith, that helmet of salvation. We need that helmet of salvation, that mind change. We need to read the word so our minds will change in the helmet of salvation to be with us, that we have life, overcoming life, the sword of the spirit. We got the word of God down on the inside. Everywhere we go, we live in our life for the Lord Jesus. We say, when we open up our mouth, we speaking things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. Oh, God, the belt of truth. We need all he's the spirit of truth. That's why you can't go around him and act like it's okay. We got to stand up for righteousness. And righteousness is nothing that you did. It's what the Lord Jesus Christ did when he went to the cross. So we could be the righteousness of Christ Jesus. He did it for us when he stayed and hung on that cross, shedding that blood. We can't forget it. We are the righteousness of Christ Jesus. He was the righteous one. And now we are allowed to be righteous because he's in us. In us. What a mighty God we serve. Always with you to protect you. When you read in the book of Psalms, you see so much about how he protects us, how he encamped the angels around and about us, how he cares for us, how he looks to make sure that we're okay, how sickness and disease can't take over us. He cannot. We may have to experience things for a time, but it can't take us over. It cannot. Why? Because we trust the living God. I don't care what you got going on. Whatever it is, it will not take you out of here unless God is taking you for a reason. God will protect us. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. When we believe him and trust him. Sometimes folks lay in bed and they don't believe God. They just believe whatever the doctors are saying. So when you come and pray for them, they be like, yes, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. But they, they, they heart is far from that. Well, he said, I got a. Uh. Soon as you walk out, the next person walk out, he said, I got a. Uh. Rather than standing up, saying what you want, you can have whatsoever you say. Why speak that on yourself, that negativity? If God want to take you out, he going to take you out anyway. Whether they say you got... Hong Kong flu or whatever. It don't matter if he's taking you home, he's taking you home. And then we can rejoice because we glad to go home. We glad because he already made a place for us. You ain't got to worry about going to no hell fire. What you worrying about that for if you're living right? God's not putting that into your spirit unless the Holy Ghost wants you to get it right. And we have to get it right. It's time out for the rest of that. We're getting it right for 2024. Amen. We're getting it straight Amen. so we can stand up and make it. So we're not living no defeated life. Amen. We're not living like that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. We trust God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. He's always making a way for us. He said, I think over in Ephesians, don't be... Drinking no wine. So many Christians that just be drinking wine and having themselves a good little time. I mean, a little wine with my dinner. He said, don't be drinking that wine. Don't be drunk with no wine. But be filled with the Holy Ghost. 
Ain't that what he said? Yes. Ephesians 5, 18, somewhere around it. He said, be filled. That's just how important it is and how much better the Holy Spirit caused you to feel. You feel so secure and it's complete in God, knowing that he's with you. You feel so happy and full of joy. You're never alone. You live in a house by yourself, but you ain't by yourself. Every day you happy and you joyful and you loving God as you watering your little plants, thanking God for the plants, thanking God for your little dog, thanking God for whatever is going on in your house, appreciating him. But you can't appreciate him without his spirit. That's why. That's why we have Holy Ghost service every Friday. So you can get filled and refilled with the Holy Ghost. So you could know today that you're protected. And you could also know that we have moved forward out of darkness into his light. He said, you are the light of the world. Ain't no darkness in you. So don't be no whirlwind trying to turn around and go back. You ain't going nowhere. You're going to keep it moving forward in Jesus' name. So right now, we need to be refreshed in the Holy Ghost. It may be somebody right now want to be refreshed in the Holy Ghost. You want to be refreshed. You want to be refilled. You don't want to be the same way. You don't want to be getting mad and angry and always got a temper tantrum going on. You don't want to think about people and think that they all messed up and you're the only one that's right. You don't want to take advantage of people, but you want to do what God say. And therefore, you need power and authority. You have to be able to lay hands on the sick, and, and, the, and they should be healed. You shouldn't have to call the church to lay hands on your own family. Lay, on, lay your hands on them. Say, it sure ain't nothing in our hand. All we doing is believe in God, and we trust in God, and we obey in him. So when we lay hands, they have to recover in the name of Jesus because we have power. The Holy Spirit is in us. We believe the Holy Spirit is in us. So we can lay hands. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we can speak a thing and it'll come to pass. Thank you, Lord. So stop taking a back seat. Use what you have. You ain't got to call up. Hey, uh, uh, uh. No, you ain't got to do that. You can ask people to pray. That's great. Agree with me in prayer. That's good. That gets God's attention. But you also have to understand with God's Holy Spirit, you have power and authority to speak to whatever it is and command it to get out of here in the name of Jesus. Dry up right now. Hallelujah. And don't think you say, well, if it's, if it's that easy, why are you still limping? I said, I'm still living because that's what I obviously want for my life. Don't think I ain't been in this face. Lord Jesus, you have me preaching on the Holy Ghost. You call me to preach the Holy Ghost. You call me to lay hands on the sick and they do recover. Yet I'm still walking like this. Lord, I need what? what? I need you to help me. What's going on with this? He says, my grace is sufficient. And I was like, then I remember, who was it? Paul had that limp. I said, Lord Jesus, you know exactly what we have need of. But Lord, I believe you and I trust you. And if this is the way it is, this is the way it is. Don't you see me still here? Don't you see? I ain't got on no high heels. And I'm still trusting God and believing him and still preaching his word. That's what he told me to do. He didn't tell me to get up and be embarrassed to go sit in the corner and act like, oh, I'm okay. No, I'm not. And my God, my petition before the Lord too. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I'm receptive to all prayer. You pray for me, I'm glad. Because the more we pray in God's face, if you a believer, now come on, don't do me like that. You know you ain't trusting God and you ain't got fuel the spirit. But I need you to pray for me. So we could trust God together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I believe him. I do. So as we trust him, 
And as we live our life, we see the hand of God move. So right now, there's some of you here right now that the doctor said you got some ailments in your body. You got some things that's going on. The doctors say, but we standing in faith to trust and to believe God. Right now, that God could do it. He is a miraculous God. And even if we can't see it at this moment, we know it's working together for our good. Why? Because we love him. Why? Because we called according to his purpose. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. That's what he said. And I don't care if you can't do certain things because maybe something's wrong with your hand. Or, it don't make no difference. It still get done now, don't it? It still get done. Because God make a way out of no way. He had them grandkids come over just in the nick of time. Okay, get that done. So right now, right now, while we're pondering in our heart right now, all of you that not feeling your best, I want you to get in the line first. If you have some problems going on, I don't know. God knows. If you have something that's not, you ain't feeling that great about something going on in your body, then come on. I need you to get in the line. We're going to pray for you. And we're going to believe God. I don't believe God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But as you believe God, I need you to make your mind up. I need you to make sure that you trust in God. No matter what, I want you to close your eyes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just close your eyes. And as you say, Lord Jesus, I believe you. Lord Jesus, I trust you. Thank you, Lord. Forgive me for all my sins. I believe, Lord Jesus, that you died on the cross, that you were buried on the third day. God the Father raised you from the dead. And right now, Lord Jesus, I open the door to my heart. And I receive you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Now you're in the line right now. You're in right standings with God. All of your sins have been forgiven. You're not carrying any sins right now. Right now you free in him. So as we pray that God heal your body, as we pray that God heal your body in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Sister Penn, I want you to come. Take this oil. And I want you to anoint everybody in the line. everyone in that line. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Sister Penn is going to anoint your people, God. And we believe in you today. Holy Spirit, we believe in you today that you will move on their behalf, God. They're going to come back with testimonies, Lord Jesus. Their faith is in place, Lord Jesus. They shall be healed, God. And we thank you and we praise you right now, Lord Jesus. Have your way, God. Your perfect will be done, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we're calling on you. So right now, Lord. Right now, Lord Jesus. Right now, Lord Jesus. Sister Penn is going to lay hands. Just lay, just lay your hands on each one and keep it. And keep going. Just lay your hands and keep going on each one in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you and we praise you right now, Lord Jesus. Right now, Lord Jesus. By your stripes, Lord Jesus. She's healed, God. Heal, God. Heal, God. Heal, God. Right now, Lord. Right now, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. 
Receive your healing. Receive your healing right now, Lord Jesus. No weapon. No weapon. You're protected by God's Holy Spirit. No weapon formed against you will prosper. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. No weapon. God, no weapon. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. No weapon, God. In the name of Jesus. No weapon, Lord Jesus. No, she's already anointed. Right now, right now, just need you to pray. Father God, right now, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you glory and honor, Lord God. Let her faith come alive. Let her faith come alive in you. Just like she believed you for a job. She believed you for everything, Lord Jesus. For her perfect healing, God. Her perfect healing, Lord Jesus. Right now, right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, right now. Believe God. Believe him. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, right now, Lord Jesus. Right now, Lord Jesus. Right now, Lord Jesus. We believe you right now. Right now, Lord. Right now, Lord. Right now, Lord Jesus. We believe it right now, God. Right now, Lord Jesus. Right now, by your power, God. Right now, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, let her receive her healing. Receive her healing. Receive her healing. Receive her healing. Receive her healing, Lord God. Right now, right now, right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. We praise you right now, Lord Jesus. Complete healing, Lord. Complete healing. Complete healing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. give you glory and honor right now, Lord Jesus. Father God, we coming again. The COVID God. In the name name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you right now, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, right now. Father God, right now. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, to take it away, Lord Jesus. And as you rest at home, be obedient to whatever they got and whatever that they say. You have to obey those that have the rule over you. But right now, Lord Jesus, we ask you that you take it away. Take it out of her body, God. Never to return in the name of Jesus. And God, right now, we give you all the glory and all the honor in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, right now, we trust you, Lord. We trust you right now, Lord Jesus. We trust you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We trust you, Lord Jesus. We trust you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, we thank you for complete healing, God. Complete healing. Complete healing. Complete healing. Complete healing. In the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus. We trust you for complete healing today. Heal her body. In the name of Jesus, whatever is going on in her temple, whatever it is that's coming against her, Lord Jesus, we know you as a healer. We know you as a way maker. We trust you. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. We could do nothing, Lord Jesus, without you. We could do nothing without you. Lord Jesus, have your way. In the name of Jesus. Right now, God, believe him. Let your faith blossom. Trust him. Believe him. Stand on his word. No matter what. Stand. Yes, Lord Jesus. He's already said it. Yes, Lord. That's him right there. That's him right there. Praise him. 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 Thank you. God 
God and you gotta trust Him for your healing. You have to depend on Him. God is a miracle worker and He's working a miracle in your temple right now to change your life completely so that you can love Him and be obedient to what He's already said. The just shall live by faith. You got to trust God. You gotta trust Him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You gotta believe Him. You got to believe Him and receive the things that He said. Thank you, Lord. And He will order your footsteps, sis. He'll order your footsteps, and a way will be made for you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Right now. Right now, Lord Jesus, as they agree as touching the Lord. Right now, we know you are a supplier, God. We know you are a supplier. The Lord Jesus, right now, God, you will hold no good thing from us as long as you live in according to the word of God. Being obedient, don't have that unruly tongue saying all kind of stuff that's ugly. In the presence of God, he's always present. He hear everything. You can't fool him or trick him. So when you come clean with him, he'll supply a car. A car is nothing for him to bring to you. It's nothing for him to bless you. So let's stand strong. Let's stand strong by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let's receive the Holy Ghost. Make sure you receive him. Ask him every day to fill you and to refill you with his spirit. Every day. Every day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And watch and see as you live holy. Be holy, said the Lord, because I'm holy. And that's the kind of God we...